It's weird dancing with no headphones on. Ooh, <laughs> welcome everybody to the Board and Scale podcast. Like he's really good into a <laughs> we have a special episode for you guys today. Um, we are going to be introducing a the beginning of a special series. Uh, Something that we've actually been looking forward to doing for a long time. We've I'm been talking about excited. it for like two months now. Yes. Do you want to reveal the name of it? Me? Yes, because Kenzie has 100% credit for the name. She thought of it completely on her own. Go ahead, <laughs> yeah. baby. Tell us. About this. You mean the He's name been fighting with me on said... this, telling me that I'm not allowed to name it this and that we would talk about it. Wait, is this the name that you revealed yes. in the last episode? So it's not really the reveal because like, it's well, already been revealed? He told kind me of. that we had to talk mm. about it, but, but we didn't just talk about it. Okay. Let me have it. So this is going to be the battle of the games. Hey. Woo. Hey, yes. We're going to rank games from one to whatever number we end up with. And 20. Yeah, because there might be well, some crossovers. Wait, there might be some crossovers. Oh, good point. So yeah. it could be like one through 18 or 19 or, you know, one through 10. You never know. So we each brought know. our top five uh, games. Contenders. And, uh, contenders. And also <laughs> uh, an honorable mention. Each, you know, just that one little guy that was kind of fighting his way and it just ended up not making it. I think well, I have three honorable mentions. That one little guy who is like not top five, so it's trash. Well, this was hard. It's a little, it was so hard. It's a little, uh, there, so just to, just to kind of get ahead of it, Dwayne's honorable mention is is really his number one, but <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that in a four player <laughs> format. Yeah. So, do you want to talk about the format no, a little bit? Um, well, yeah. So, what's basically going to happen is we're going to after we do this video and we reveal all of our top fives, we're going to then do our best to in a timely manner. Play every single one of them. With uh, the four of us. So yeah. each of us is going to play the same game together. Yes. And at the end of each play, um, we're going to do a discussion video to talk about how we felt about the game. And we're going to do that for each game with the end of it all uh, culminating in a the final ranking each of them individually. Where if there's discrepancies and deciding where a game should go, the winner of that individual game will get the final say based on ties and stuff like that. What? I don't know. You look like you had something to say. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm probably not going to get a final say in any game. So. <laughs> oh, man. It's fine. You gotta. Hey, I just got last. Not even your own? <laughs> You're not going to win your own probably games? Probably not. Yeah, that's oh, all right. Yes, you will. That. Yes, you I will. So, um, in the board gamer like fashion, to decide who goes first, we are going to do Shwazi. And I think we've explained it. Do you have it pulled up? I do not have it pulled up, but I can pull it up real quick. You got this. I think I've already explained this. Shwazi is an app that essentially just picks a person to go first. You put your finger on it, uh, everyone puts their fingers on it, and it picks one, and that's who goes first. Um, Excuse you. Crocodile arms I have over small here. Arms. <gasps> I'm, pink. I'm blue. I'm gonna win. Nope. Oh, oh Kev, Kev gets Kev to start. Stewart. Whatever. Yeah. All, All right. right. Whatever. So, Who cares? so <laughs> we're doing our honorable mentions first, right? Yes. Oh, we're yeah, gonna, yeah. We're gonna start with Kev and do our honorable <laughs> mentions, and then we're gonna go round Ooh. robin, going honorable mention five, four, three, two, one. So go ahead, Kev. What's your honorable <gasps> mention? All right. Oh my is. God! Wow. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Our, our wonderful producer in the house today. <sighs> Is a great friend of mine. He's going to be helping us out with this so we don't have to keep getting up and down. <clears throat> All right. So honorable mention is uh, <clears throat> Twilight Imperium. Um, Do you know how happy I am that this is your honorable mention? Yeah. So that's actually a part of the reason. <laughs> um, like. So so this was my number five all the way up until Thursday when we played games last, which was two days ago. Um, yeah, because it's Saturday today. And uh, I love the game. It's fantastic. It's one of the best Forex games out there. Uh, so much going on. It's uh, obviously hard to teach. Not necessarily hard to teach, but it's a lot for, for new players. Um, but probably the most difficult thing about the game is getting the people together with the time to play the time it. time commitment, for sure. And we have been struggling through this already with uh, one of our game groups trying to find a time where everybody's schedules work out, where everybody's got like a 12 hour block where we can sit down and play the game. <laughs> and that's proving 
dang near impossible to the point where like people have to take time off of work in order <laughs> to get the game to the table. And so as much as I love the game and I want it to be one of my top five, the reality is, is that it doesn't really deserve a place in the top five because it it's You're not just spending the time with it. Yeah, exactly. And, and like there are other games that are complex, just as complex and more complex that don't take nearly as long to play even at higher player counts. Um, so, you know, this one just being, I mean, it's once it's a once a year game. If you're lucky, uh, if you've got enough people with interest. So that's why that is, uh, love it. I love it to pieces. Um, I'm happy I own it. And I mean, it's a pleasure to play every time I get to, it's just, yeah, I it have played often. it once and it damn near took the entire 12 hours that we had planned out for it. Um, not even full player count. Have you played it, Dwayne? No, but Me I want to play it so bad. I am part of the game group that he's talking about that cannot find yeah. the time to play. And it. me as well. I'd love, you know, we've talked yeah. even to the Setting point the of where and... we've <laughs> we're considering of just breaking it up into like a couple weeks of a game. Yeah, I want to play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kenzie, Kenzie is not a very like space four X type person anyway. So I'm also not like a huge fan of playing a game for twelve hours at a time. Oh, I love like, it. That's a little too much, and I don't like political stuff. Like. Mm. It I don't want to have political. to rely on someone else for my game to do good. That's fair. And it's not something that I really enjoy. Yeah, we've got I've got a table not dissimilar than this one. It's got like the inset where you can put things on top of it. So we've we've talked about, you know, we usually every Thursday nights we got like four to six hours. So you could feasibly do TI over three or, or two to three. Um, you could do it sessions. in two if you if you really, really got tried. there. Everybody knew the rules. It was set up. You sat down. You played. Played for as long as you could packed everything up and then did it again you could get it done in two um but with six players i mean it's 12 hours is i think is still on the generous side um two hours per player Especially is new pretty, players yeah is pretty normal um so no thanks uh i love it <laughs> uh it is definitely the other thing too is it is all about the right group and obviously this is the right group i would love playing this game with y'all but minus um, one yeah <laughs> hey you I would enjoy would, playing I would with still me enjoy playing with you i just yeah the, you would uh, enjoy laughing at me as yeah, i complained the entire time i was time. recently invited to play the game <laughs> um at black potion and despite my love for the person who uh invited me to play the game um it was very much a wait a minute who else is playing yeah because oh just some guys i know yeah i'm like i've never played with these people this is not a game i want to play with strangers so oh for sure yeah um but yeah there you go that's my uh, honorable mention so all right <sighs> we have a lot of these to get through so let's uh pick up producer the pace. next one i did not bring my honorable mention oh, oh because it's okay i did not bring my honorable mention but in the same vein as kevin my honorable mention is actually my number one. Okay. Um, but we don't even we own that to show it off either. No, so. we cannot. We literally, it is impossible for four, uh, us four to play the game. It's Blood on the Clock Tower. You, y'all probably knew that already. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it would be literally impossible to play for us because this is just not the the group, the, the number format. count that we can get a game going. Um, but. All the reasons I love Blood on the Clock Tower. Um, I love social deduction already. In my opinion, it's the best social deduction game that's out there. Um, it mixes social deduction with um, actual like gameplay very well. It's not strictly social deduction. It's not strictly gameplay. It mixes it very well. Um, I also like the fact that I believe it's one of the only one of the only social deduction games you can play with people that you do not know and it would work pretty well just because there's so much information that um you can't heavily rely on knowing people's isn't mannerisms it, you and cannot tell. Be isn't an it better person, if you though. don't know them it, nah, i mean you definitely want to so it's more comfortable if it, it, but it, like if you know someone really well and they're lying to you you can just be like Muffle. you could but You've never you've never you've never played it, so like yeah. I'm no, that's saying true. that's true. I'm that's saying true. that not like that, not like that. <laughs> no, like that. It's but like, like that. it's exactly like there's that. a whole lot of sorry. There's a whole lot of information that. that can get skewed. So it might seem like they're lying, but they could be telling the truth. And their somebody truth. could their be telling version the truth. Of the their truth. truth their, right? Yes, their okay. truth. Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean that's that that is a bit of it though. I mean, we discussed this just the other day um, after playing on Wednesday that like personalities do play a part 
and knowing people's personalities. We literally had one player say, hey, when this player acts like this, they're lying, right? <laughs> so like relationships and things like that do do play a factor and it does change the dynamic mm-hmm. of the game. Like another person voted uh, to kill me just because I was me. And, <laughs> oh, and despite man. all the evidence to the contrary, and that person was on my team and had pretty good evidence that they were on my team and still voted me off. So personality does come into play, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't kill you. Immediately. I think it's entertaining. <laughs> not, a, not immediately. I think it's entertaining. And I, and I don't know. I think that knowing the people you play with is, is definitely better in my opinion. Cause I feel I'm a nervous person. So it's hard for me to be like, Hey, can I take you in private over here and <laughs> let's have a discussion? Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, Liar. It, it is fun though. <laughs> it's a good game. So, but yeah, those are, that's, those are all the reasons why it was, it is my number one, but did not make it into the top five. So blood on the clock tower, honorable mention. Yeah. All right. Babe. Mm. Do you, okay. do you have it? figured out yet um, so i have a lot of honorable mentions okay deciding her list up until we hit record (laughs) so i had my top four good the five was just so hard because this one is like a bunch of different games that i just enjoy playing it's not like one of those ones where i'm like oh this is like up there for me these are just ones that i generally enjoy and these can be ones that i've played like once or twice or i've played this a few times or you know i play them once every three years It's just one of those, it's just that spot that's like reserved for that kind of game that goes which way. So I'm going to mention two different ones, but I'm just going to show off one and talk about it. Your honorable mention? Yeah. Okay. So Barcelona is one of those (laughs) that I really enjoy. It's a newer one, like I said. Um, And then Revive, which is right here, is another one that is in my honorable mentions. That was very, very close. That was five for a little while. Really? And then I switched it out. Okay. Yes. Um, and the last one is actually another. Whoa. This is the one I'm going to show off and I'm going to talk about. You're getting three <laughs> honorable mentions? I'm not going to talk about all of them. The third one that I'm going to talk about is actually, I'm not going to pull it out because it's right here, actually. <laughs> I lied. Okay. It's actually this guy. So this is another board and dice game. Have you guys ever played Terracotta Army? So this is one of those games that it's very hard to tell who's going to win until the very end. And I think we've only played it, what, twice? Two or three times. Um, but the gameplay of it is just beautiful and it's so seamless and it's got a rondelle of actions that changes every time. So me, I'm like, oh, I'm going to plan out exactly what I'm doing. And then Sebastian's like, I'm going to rotate this one step. And yeah, that's it like, it completely changes everything yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. Um, you have to adapt. Yeah. Uh, which is not something that I really like to do, but I enjoy the way that this game does it. Um, and so, yeah, that's why it was one of my honorable mentions. And I really wanted to force you guys to play it because it's one of my favorite games. And that just... But it won't because it's It didn't make mention. it in there. It didn't make it in there. So that's okay. the one that I'm going to talk about for the most. You said force you guys to play it. And I heard I'm going to divorce you guys and play it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, I don't, I don't get that, but okay. You're right. married to me in games. You um, just don't you, know it. Okay, you got it. My honorable mention is going to be basically the Clank series, mm. but especially Clank Catacombs. Clank Catacombs, or if you haven't played Clank, it's basically a dungeon adventuring game where you're trying to move through a dungeon and avoid the monster, the big dragon. You don't want to take damage before, you know, and then die. You're adventuring, trying to find treasure, uh, collecting allies and like other trinkets and stuff throughout the game for points. It, it, I like the game. I've always liked the game. The, the, all the expansions make it better. Catacombs is the first time I felt like, wow, this is actually a dungeon like crawling adventure because the dungeon is randomly drawn and built every single game. Because instead of it being an entire pre built board, you have a stack of tiles that go out with paths and rooms and stuff that you, you know, you set when you, if you're the person that draws them. You're the one that decides the orientation that they go in. And it just makes it feel a lot more thematic, in my opinion. For a game that I already liked, it just added that much extra, you know, flavor to it. Um, And I, while you do miss out on, like, all the extra expansion stuffs with Catacombs specifically, just because it's its own thing, I still think it's the better of 
of the series. Is it a standalone expansion? Can you play it with the it's other content? It's not an expansion. You cannot play with the other content. He was. Um, that's not dope. true. I'm pretty sure you can still <laughs> well, play. You can add the unique, genuine question. You can add the unique characters, <laughs> which like the, the acquisitions incorporated are their own stuff. Thing. The characters are fine because it's just a set of cards. Yeah, they're their own thing. They're so, not part of the like. They're they're an expansion on their own that you add to the games. Okay. So you knew that there. I would have something to say about this. Because Clank was for so long my number one game. Probably years. Probably like four or five years. If you would ask me what my ones. favorite game was, it was Clank. This started my love for deck building games. Excuse me. Jesus. Um, and then when this one came out, I was like, maybe it's not in my top anymore. Excuse me. Yeah, for her, she did. She like it went down for her. For me, it went up. So I think it was just the investment I had in the game. I'm dying right now. <laughs> I don't know. While, while she's dying Sorry, over y'all. There. She's emotional right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, so it, it sounds like the, the, the release of this one somehow impacted her ability to enjoy the other ones. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, no. never mind. She's no, re- no. refuting no, no, no. it from the distance. Hey, yeah, maybe, maybe you should also drink that bottle of water right in front <laughs> of you. Just a thought. So I feel better now. No, it wasn't that. It was more so I had just spent so much time and effort and money in the other one. This one came out and I knew it was better. There was no like, there wasn't a um, like, oh no, like this compares really well. It just, it was better. And it's like, I just bought six expansions, five expansions. Not just, the, just we've collected them over time. Like, I bought the game twice. Got it. Like, I put all of this money and effort into this first one for this one to come out and just be that much better. And By it was itself. like, it made me sad. <laughs> and it just, I just didn't want to play it anymore. It's not going to replace uh, Acquisition Incorporated, though. We're excited for No, I'm one. still really excited for the Legacy 2. And that's the mention. I don't want to turn this into an honorable essay. So let's <laughs> we'll move on from this one. <laughs> yeah. But that's Clank right. Catacombs, my honorable mention. Now we're going to move on to Kevin's number five. Number five Aru. <laughs> Producer. Now we got it. <laughs> there surprise, it surprise. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. All right. I'm actually surprised. Are you? Why are you surprised? I just, we've never played it. You've talked about it once. Um, Because I saved this game. I won't say save it, but it's a six player game that plays really well at six players, um, which I don't think is super common. Um, yeah, it's not. Yeah. So. Red Rising. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, most six-player games. I mean, it, there's a lot of decision space in it, um, and players taking their turns and taking up spaces in it definitely impacts um, what you can do on your turn. So you can't really, like, plot your turn out and be ready. Um, somebody can take all of your stuff, you know, take the, the harvesting the spaces, spots, whatever, yeah. exactly. So for if you don't know, it's a, it's a pretty standard worker placement. Um, doesn't really have, it's, you know, no thrills, no thrills, pretty basic. Um, but it's light, it's fun, it's deeply thematic. I think it's really easy to teach. Um, I think all the symbols in the, in, on the board are very self-explanatory. I think all of the, the, the cards are very, very simple. So for me, as a worker placement, um, it just shines in a lot of different ways. It still does have a very competitive space to it because there are limited places to go and you kind of need to be able to do those things. So like the wake up order and the, which creates turn order is really, really I important. love that mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's just enough stuff. Um, and we had a discussion, we played apiary, uh, on Thursday night. Um, is that, am I not spelling that, pronouncing that right? No, APR? we just oh, still yeah. haven't Sad. played it. Oh yeah. Space bees. I was like, what? Um, and it, it sparked, a, sparked a conversation about like, what are your favorite worker placement games? Uh, and there are plenty of other ones that are out there that are really fantastic. Um, and technically, I've got another one on my list. Um, but this one definitely definitely shines for me in a lot of ways. So we will get to play it. Is this Ooh. one? Have you played this before, Dwayne? I have. Oh, I, can, I have, forgot that being in the list means we're going to play it. <laughs> yep, we have all play. played this before. <laughs> oh, sick. We can just so bust this one this out. this is one that, well, it's also going to come with a lot of uh, preconceived ideas about it. Oh, sure. So, But uh, we, I've never played it at four players. So maybe that'll change it. We've yeah. have we not played? We've no, only played we've like only three or less. Three. Oh wow! <clears throat> I played it at three players recently. Do you um, like it? It was fine. Yeah, it, well, because again, it scales really well. So it's only the um, half the spaces. odd numbers that are problematic. Because when you're playing with two players, you got one space. Four players, so it's the third player that makes that space <laughs> more contentious. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe that's why 
yeah, you have troubles with it. I hated it more keep too than you. anything. So. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. Well, that's Kev's <laughs> number five. And we'll move on to Dwayne's. My number five. Pull that bad boy out. Oh, oh my, my God. Just massive boxes all. Oh, my gosh. This is Sebastian's right. happiness right now. This is Cthulhu Wars. This is my big, stupid, dumb, <laughs> fun, ridiculous game. Um, honestly, it literally just cracked my top five. Oh. Yeah. Um, is it new? No, oh. this game's been out, um, but I've oh I haven't played it that much. But every any time I've played it, I've had that much fun with it. So it's literally just it's straight up dudes on the map, area control, um, very streamlined, very simple, huge toy factor. So like it says on the side of the box, we love a toy factor, actual size, actual size of the <laughs> minis. So they're like that big so that's why the box is so big that's why the box okay. is so big Got it. That's cool. um this is also the most expensive game i've i've bought um granted again because of the size of the miniatures and stuff like that to be expected to be expected um but yeah i really can't say much more than it's just straight fun beat people up elder gods just huge pieces on a board moving them around super fun it's it's a whole lot of fun um and yeah just cracked my top five nice. number five cthulhu wars all right okay that's exciting I'm, I'm pretty excited for a fighting game against kenzie you're really gonna like this one <laughs> i'm gonna cry the whole time but and it's fine kenzie's it's number fine. five Oh, I should have known. You should have. You're going to know all of mine. I didn't know that one. There's only one that you may, might be like, why? Okay. So, this is my five. This was almost my four. I went back and forth between my four and five. But this ended up in my five. Um, only because I'm kind of, like, on the outskirts of it. Right? So, I played it a lot. We went hardcore in this game in both, like physical copy and on BGA. We played it a lot on BGA. And it kind of, for a little while, I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm I don't need to play this for a while. And then we opened it the other day with you, and I was like, I love it so much. So this is my top five. It's just, you know. It's elegant. Playing building, or Jesus. Playing building. I know how to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. You know, you're hosting stuff, and you're bringing people in and it's a good time it's a good time and it can go up to what six players can it uh, oh with the upstairs downstairs with the upstairs expansion. downstairs and go five to six and yeah. that i know you have so i do we're yeah good. but no one <clears throat> else is allowed to play with that's us. true that's true that's, that's true. true for the format <laughs> anyway uh and just it plays extra, really well at four players too yeah, yeah. so just an extra kind of into games dan halligan halogen i don't know if i'm pronouncing it but it's obvious that this is a passion project and that he put a lot of care in this game um, he also puts a lot of care into the service of the game of the game and making sure people are having a happy experience and judging the game based on playing it. Yeah, I I got the uh, after playing it one time uh, with them, I decided to back the campaign. Part of the reason we want I wanted to play it was because the campaign was live. Went out and bought everything that was available for it. Um, took a little while for me to crack into it, and like usual, um, <laughs> but. Um, one of the the boards for the upstairs downstairs expansion and the uh, the rule book there was something something happened in the printing process where they were like stuck together and there was like this residue all over them so I emailed Dan uh, on a Sunday evening at like <laughs> five thirty or something like that um, just the support email and within half an hour I had a reply back saying hey no problems you know this is the address I have on file from your order I'm gonna send you the replacements. You know, really sorry about that. And um, he sent the stuff. And in addition, he sent an enamel pin 
uh, as oh, wow. well <clears throat> as the sheets to meeple, uh, sti- uh, the meeple stickers to turn all the meeples into to characters. You know, nice. characters. That's cool. Um, so completely unnecessary, but uh, obviously deeply appreciated. And again, you can just tell that he cares a lot about uh, the game and everything surrounding it. So he definitely put a lot out. of effort into it, and yeah. it definitely shows when you big play up the game, to Dan so. and Kayanta Games. That was my five. All right, my number five. We actually just played right. it. A little hippity hoppity. Why don't you go grab it over there? Drum roll. Oh, oh, the lights. Sorry. Is that an omen? The set's under construction. Ah, you just leave it down. Um, <laughs> it's going to be chaos. Go ahead and pop it on there. <laughs> there you go. My hey! number five is Bunny Kingdom. This game, uh, for those who don't know, Kenzie and I used to live in Maryland. When we first moved to Maryland, we had maybe 40 games, something like that. Maybe 30. Well, no, not even. We had maybe 20. We had a few. We had not this. This in Great Western. We're the two from Maryland. The first thing we did in Maryland, and like one of the first weekends, was find a game store. Mm-hmm. We found a local game store called like Family Game Time or something like that. Walked in there and I saw this on their table. Like their, um, was it the demo table or was it just on the like featured? I think it was a demo table. Okay. And I saw the bunnies <laughs> and I was like, I want it. The bunnies I got them. These little tiny bunny minis, if you haven't played the game, they're like this. They're just little bunnies. I have to have it. So we bought that and Great Western Trail. Um, And I think uh, on one of the first weekends, this was before we had kids, we took it to a Hooters and played it on the table at Hooters and ordered wings. And we sat there for like an hour playing, figuring out the game. It was way longer than an hour. We were probably there for like four or Um, five hours that day just playing games. It was funny that we had multiple waitresses and the manager come up and we'd be like, Someone told me that someone was playing a board game, <laughs> over here, and I just wanted to come and look at it. What is this? And that on, it, on its own is just a nice memory. But the game is so fun to me, and maybe it's the nostalgia attached to it. Um, but it's very easy card drafting game. You're collecting uh, or claiming territories, collecting these parchments that will help you score based on different territories, different things that you collect throughout the game. Very simple game, and. We've played it, I think, almost 40 times or almost something oh like that. Gosh. Maybe almost 30, but we'll never leave the collection. It's one of my favorites. My number five. Despite how well you did? Despite getting <laughs> absolutely last in the game that we just played probably an hour ago. But yeah, that's my number five. Okay, Kev. Number right. four. Number four. Number four. Over. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Ooh. Dune Imperium. Um, you got I, the cool one. Is that the big box? It mm-hmm. is. The, it's the yeah with all of the the pieces and they're all. I painted everything. Um, glitzed it oh. all up. So that'll be fun to oh, table. Yeah, oh, for yep. sure. That's gonna be fun. Uh, but we're all, you know the disclaimer. I like all my stuff. This is just the base games and whatnot. The um, like there's expansion content for it. Um, but just playing the base games and really only talking about the base games because haven't really had a lot of chance to to table the expansions, but. Um, absolutely love the IP here. This is a big part of it for me. Um, I read all the Dune books, the the Frank Herbert ones, the the six that count. Um, not any <laughs> of the other trash, like the thirty other books that don't wow. count. Yeah, they're bad. They're real bad. Um, but uh, the movies, the the new movies are fantastic. So there's a lot of IP like around in the. I'm just surprised the you like the new movies. Timothy I've Chalamet. seen I've seen some OG Dune people being like, "This is not what this is supposed to be." This is poopy. No, it's fantastic. Timmy, I think they're- Timmy, <laughs> Timmy Chalamet doesn't deserve to be that character. Zendaya, what? Why do they have a wrestler on there? Yeah. Oh, that's true. He's in there too. Uh, anyway. Yeah. No, I think they're great. I have no problem with the. I mean, I love the movies. I think they're fantastic. I'm definitely looking forward to the second one. Number two. two. Yeah. And I, they're supposed to be making the third one, which will be the 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 second book, um, which I think will be good, too. Um, but at any rate, um, again, technically, partially a worker placement game, but also a, uh, a deck builder. So the ability to collide those two things, um, I think, is really interesting. And I think the game does it really well. Um and I'll take a quick second to talk about the fact that this is also, um, you know, a game I have not played very often. I have not been able to play this much. My play count is like two or three only, um, which was interesting because previous conversations about picking top fives, there are a lot of games that I'm getting to play now that I'm like, if I had two or three more plays under my belt with this game, it like contend. it can easily be a top five game. Games like Castles of Burgundy, 
Uh, hell, even Food Chain Magnet was really phenomenally fun. Orleans? Um, Orleans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, all there's. we've been, able, again, I mentioned last time, we've been uh, hitting a lot of new games, a lot of stuff. Great Western Trail. So many games. Lot, so much fun. But now only having one under the belt, it's really difficult to make that decision. So um, it'll be really interesting to come back to this list in like a year um, after some of those games get to hit the table. Yeah, second, for Battle third of the Games time. Part 2. Yes. Mm, 2024. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's my number four. <clears throat> beautiful, nice. beautiful. I'll say I'm a fan of this game too. Uh, yeah. I think we've played it two have, or three times as well. Have you played it? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, mm-hmm. base game. Another one we've all played. Nice. So we can just bust this one out and play it. Ooh, Dwayne's number four. Another big end. So I, I peeped gonna, this one earlier, this and is, I was like, oh. <laughs> that one's probably gonna get into Kenzie's once we get our copy of it. So that's the thing. I don't. Okay. Well, let's. Let I don't want to take it go over. Ahead. You go. go you ahead. go. You go. go. All right. So this is Wonderland's War. Um, it is based on Alice in Wonderland. It is a drafting, bag building, push your luck area control game. Um, ag- again, it's a huge like table presence. Um, you could walk by the table and it's like, whoa, that looks Beautiful. awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's very fun. I I I've found that I like bag building a lot. Yep. Um. He's gonna love Orleans. Yeah, uh, I might. It looks fun. Oh, you Orleans. didn't play that with us. I Orleans. did not. <clears throat> um, but yeah, again, another game that I have not played very often. But when I play it, it's a whole lot of fun. I don't think I've ever played it with four. I think I've only ever played it at three. So that'll be a new number for me, and we'll see how that goes. But. I've always had fun with this game. It looks amazing. It plays very well. I just like it a lot. Looks cool. <laughs> yeah, this will be this will be fun. Another another area control skirmish. What do you call it a skirmish game? Nah. No. It's it's more area control yeah. than anything. Okay. So this is one that I was telling him earlier because I, I accidentally peeped it. Wow. Um <laughs> but I was like it's, it's not even one that I thought of because we don't have it. Yeah. So it was very out of sight, out of mind. And we've only played it once. But even though I've only played it once, I was still like, yeah, that could have made it and thematically, if it was here. It's, it's just, just beautiful. It's just up your alley. Even though mm-hmm. I hate, I, I don't want to say I hate, but I'm not a big fan of area control. It still is like, so I'm very excited that this isn't yours. And as we go through this top five, you will notice a pattern that table presence is a huge really thing for me. Really? Even though Clock Tower has no table, even presence. though Clock Tower has no, no table, table presence, at all. but the game <laughs> just takes it over. Um, but yeah, that is Wonderland's War. All right, and now Kenzie's. All right, what do you think it is? Your I my that. my four. I have no idea, dude. Your first one threw me all the way off. Wow, I would not have guessed that. Okay, a Fister classic. <laughs> So this is my four. This is one that we've played quite a few times now. Yeah, yeah. Um, More than I, five. The action sequence of this game is probably one of my favorite of any. So it's got the, you have, I think it's six or seven different choices of actions. And they each have um, correlating like abilities that go with them. We're and then you <laughs> just leave it down. We're going to get some from up there. We're anyway. giving up on it. Um, so the person that takes the action takes it from the top or wherever it is and moves it down to the bottom, right? So the person next to them can't retake that action without having like a huge negative with it. Um, And then something with this game, it's also like, I don't want to say it's a like hand building because it's not, but you're like, you're trying to draw cards to get the most points while also getting like different abilities and passive stuff with playing the cards. But each action also correlates with cards. So it's, it's got a lot to it, and I just really enjoy all of the like the, like stuff that's going on with it because it's got so many different aspects of it. So you're moving down a river while settling cities around that river while also playing cards, and it's like one thing right after the other, and it's just the actions are just perfect, even though the theme is like, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Yeah, the theme's <laughs> kind of weird. There's cows. Um, it's a wasteland. I'm not really sure. <laughs> is there a... A lake, lake in it? <laughs> <laughs> there is a. Well, there, it's more of a river. It is I'm more honest. of a river. You're moving down the river. The was lake. The, it's a lake. Was it was Boone River 
named Boone River Taken? <laughs> Maybe. Boone Lake is actually an area on it. Oh. Not. Oh, yeah. It is one of the names it's, of the It's cities. one of the cities. So that's the titular there space. You go. Uh, hey. <laughs> there you go. But it's also the Tiddly. resources with this. Um, you you start the game only having, like, I think three resources. Two. You have two. No, no, no. Because your boats are two. And then you start with one. So you have three. You start with three. Um, and then you have to upgrade to get the rest and move the boat down the river if you want to be able to play your different cards that have different abilities on them. So it's like you have to prioritize that, even though every game I will max out all my resources. I promise you. That's my thing. I will do it. Um, and we just got the expansion for it. But anyway. So for each of these, just so you guys know, if we don't, if you don't feel like we explain them all the way here, this is more just us talking about how, That's feel, true. That's how true. we feel about them ourselves. The discussion videos will have a lot more detail about each game, just so that it's known. Don't That's be what sad. I'm for. And I'm really excited. And I'm excited for you guys to play it because you okay. guys haven't played this one, right? I have not played nope. this. I'm excited for you guys to play it. My number four. Oh, I know what this one is now. Tweet, 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 tweet. What's that in the distance? <laughs> oh. I hear the flapping of wings. The greatness of this box of cardboard will span <laughs> through time. Look how beautiful. This ego on the back, my yes. God. Uh, so gorgeous. my number four is the Stonemeyer banger, we'll call it, Wingspan. It's too big for we me. do have <laughs> the Wingspan <laughs> nesting box that ha- holds all of the content for the game, which we do have. Um, I think we have absolutely everything that's come out for this game. Yes, I love this game, and this is this this game is the reason why I have two bird tattoos. If I'm honest, um, there's just something about it. The fact that you have all these beautiful cards, all the art on all the cards, is so just calming and pretty to look at. So even when you're when you're losing, you just have cool stuff to look at. <laughs> um, but I don't know that I like the ease of it and the fact that it can still be a very deeply satisfying game when you do get your engine going. And like I said, the art is just amazing. And I think we've played this one close to 40 so times, times as well. And honestly, weirdly, I don't know if you guys would agree, the big box has kind of shortened, or not shortened, but like lessened how many times we want to pull it out just because it's so huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. it makes it kind of daunting. Yeah, because there's just so much to organize before playing. But regardless, it has still stayed in my number four. And it will be probably very hard to continue to push down. Yeah. I mean, the big box, the other part of the problem is that if you're not playing at home, it's never coming with you almost. I mean, I think you brought it to to Black Potion one time. And, like, why don't we – and we ended up not playing it, but, like – it doesn't. I mean, if you can fit it into a board game bag, but like that's it's like going to be the it. only game that you bring in. <laughs> yeah. So you know, um, and then people see the giant box and they're like, "Are we really going to play that?" <laughs> I think most people at this point understand that, like, we, what have a, an idea at least what Wingspan is, and you know, like it might be big, but you can if you tell people you're going to play it. I mean, yeah. If you're intimidated by the size of the box. <laughs> Mm, okay. Our producer's okay. laughing. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my number four. You know, so you'll hear more about it in the discussion. It's two Stone Mare games in the list. That is. Oh yeah, oh, viticulture. viticulture. Yep. Sebastian's gonna have another one. So. Oh, oh no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How, more do you, how do you? How do you feel about uh, area control games? <laughs> No, this is a political one. <laughs> it's also very much an area control game. Uh, yeah, so this is my number three. Um, cool Meteor Not Simon's uh, Rising Sun. Um, disclaimer, though, part of the reason that it deserves this spot and it gets this spot is only when it's played, when it's fully glitzed out. So I left the Daimyo box and some of the other components at home because um, I didn't need them to, to display here and we weren't playing it today. Um, but uh, with a lot of Simon products. I mean, it's the miniatures. It's all the additional pieces through the Kickstarter campaigns, getting all the upgraded content, whatnot really makes that table presence, something that is, is a sight to be seen. Um, so this one, and I think all three of the next, uh, my top three have like additional stories and stuff to them that are part of the reasons why, like, even if they're not perfect games and, and may not, you know, 
do everything really well, there is some aspect of them that uh, that makes them resonate for other reasons. Uh, and this one was a was a favorite for uh, the cadets I played uh, games with at West Point at the War Games Club. Um, whenever I you know I can't remember what enticed me to bring this one uh, or if one of them had asked about it or whatever, but. Uh, we, we got it to the table and after that, I mean, they just loved it and it was so much fun hanging out with these young men, uh, and women, um, you know, and getting them to see and explore the game and whatnot and, and, and do the Alliance things and just <laughs> a lot of great memories in the, uh, in the closet of its library, uh, at, at West Point. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it holds a special place in my heart for that. And it is, I do think it is a fun game, so. I'm excited. Samurai. I love this I'm game excited. so much. I I thought one of these three were going to be um, in there, but they just didn't quite make it. Um, I think Rising Sun is probably my what? favorite of the three. You mean the the Lang specials, yeah. mm-hmm. Ankh and Blood Rage? Mm-hmm. Like I just I've been playing Ankh a lot recently, and yeah, I think I thought it would make it, but it didn't. But Rising Sun is got great you, game. boo. Love it. I'm so excited. Much. Yeah. Kenzie is also excited. I'm so excited. (laughs) And with that, we move on to Dwayne's number three. Okay. Okay. So, Dice Throne. Yahtzee. This one was very um, early on in my board gaming days. So, for a while, it used to just be me and my friend Matt. It would just be us two playing games. And in fact, this game was the first board game that I played that wasn't with my family. Um, I opened the rule book. I learned the rules. I was like, yo, Matt, you trying to play this? We played it on this little white table. That white table, by the way, will hold memories forever because we played so many games on that table. <laughs> He'll, he Just knows you what guys. About. Just us. Um, so we played it uh, with just one of the... the little two starter boxes and we fell in love with it. So we brought other, our other friends were like, Hey man, you're trying to play this. This game's awesome. It's a Yahtzee style. You get three rolls uh, to pick an ability on your board. There's so many different characters in the game. Uh, You're trying to beat everybody else. It can be a team game. It could be all for one, whatever, however you want it. It's also has a, uh, campaign mode another one coming out with x-men stuff um which i just backed to i've got all the dice drone stuff i love this game so much it's a lot of fun very chaotic just throw, rolling dice you're taking damage you're taking damage blah, 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 blah. <laughs> a whole lot of fun simple another simple one too you can catch on real easy but mm-hmm. i can't wait to win I can't wait to kill you first. <laughs> All right. Oh. That's aggressive. Oh. Be aggressive. Oh. Be, be aggressive. Huh? That is dice Kenzie's throw. number three now. Okay. So. I guess uh, you already did your number three. So it's too late to be like, number three. Oh. Number three. <laughs> so my next three, all of us have played. I know this for sure because we've all played all three of these in my house. So my number three the Cosmos game. I figured I thought so. <laughs> We've talked about Anno on here before. I don't. We don't need to talk about it too much right now. But this is my number three. I absolutely love this game. This is a Colt Carly classic. I'll talk about it every single time. Um, we got it because of her, and I'm so happy. I've only ever played it with her one time, but to be fair, I pointed the game out, and Kenzie saw the art and was and like, I said, no. "That looks stupid." <laughs> And then, and then, she, uh, she Carly showed it to her, and she was like, "Oh my God, yas!" I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I trust Carly. Okay, okay, I trust her. I trust her more than I trust you sometimes. I, I don't, blame, I don't blame Seb though, because I mean, you flip this thing around and you look at it, and you're like, ah, there's. I mean, you mean you don't, you don't blame, blame me? No, no, I no, I don't blame him for his opinion on the art. Oh no, you're you didn't like the art. She my didn't bad. like it. I my thought art. it was I so do, cool. I yeah. My bad. I was oh, like, yeah. are you going to take it back now that it's me? <laughs> uh, I was really trying to help you out, man. It's okay. I yeah. was like, whoa, industrial game? Let me get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, no, this is my three. We've all played it. I'm excited to play it again. I'm excited to play it all together because we have not played it all with all four of us. I've never played this at four people. 
I know we've always played three. So yeah. We or no, see. didn't we play me, you, Allison, and Dwayne? Did you not play with us? It was just three I of us. I played with us. Oh. Us three. And then us three. us three played. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So, okay. Mm-hmm. This is my number three. Anno 1800, based on the video game that is very hard, a lot harder than the board game. My number three. Oh, is this another Tapestry? St- another Stone Meyer huh? classic. <laughs> tapestry. Oh, uh, man. It doesn't look like it, but I have every single piece of content <laughs> in this base tapestry Except box. Except for the playmat. Except for the playmat. Good because it's huge. So not but every piece of content. But. I love tapestry. I saw when I think, I don't know where I saw this actually, but when I saw it and I looked at the back and I saw all the little freaking buildings, I was like, dude, Toy Factor, I want to touch those buildings. You have to buy this game. <laughs> um, turns out, uh, it's it's marketed as a the you know the shortest rule book because it's only four pages and this even, one yes it's marketed not now as the shortest rule book. it's only four pages maybe the base not game now because it's got all the <laughs> extra content even when it was the base game they also had two separate help sheets so. but also shout out to Stone Meyer for putting every single thing in one rule book when they came out with the last expansion yes with Just all saying. the errata Just and saying. all of that stuff erotica yeah no you didn't know that. <laughs> It's a family show. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, it is a, just to describe, it's a civilization game, which I think is cool to, because the game itself, it's not, the gameplay itself, not anything crazy, but thematically to me, the feeling of progress that I get in this game, perfect for what I like. And it is extremely easy to play. It's not hard to teach at all. But yeah, that's my number three, Tapestry. That is going to be another tough one to beat from my list. And I'm so glad I get to force you guys to play with me. It makes my head hurt. Number two. Which, okay. uh, that's also the third, as we pointed out, the third Stone Mary game on the list. Yeah, I cannot believe There's three more. that we're already at two. Yeah. Well, it's going a lot quicker. Two. I think we've got, a good, we've got a good system now. Number two. Kevin's Bring number back. two. Bring it out. It's Bring it the, out. It's on the list for us. Yeah, it is. Check the other bag. Oh, yeah, there's two bags. He's got two bags. Oh, maybe I didn't bring it. Because <gasps> maybe that was the one where I, I did leave it because I didn't have room. Oh. Is this going to be our first double? Probably. Mayhaps. May, mayhaps. Um, yeah, Brass. Um, number one rated Brass game. Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham. Um, number one game on Board Game Geek. Deserving. Uh, so. Well deserving. Um, it's just one of those games where I've never seen anything that has mechanics like it. I don't really even know how to describe it. I thought the about, links. Yeah. The links. <laughs> also the designer of Anno. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, and Ro- Roxley's, you know, components are really good. Um, the, the clay chips make it really enjoyable. Um, yeah, honestly, it's just, it's a phenomenal game. The other thing for what I, what I find interesting about this game and, and really rewarding is playing this with new players who haven't played a lot of heavy games before because even though it feels dense and impenetrable um as soon as you get through your canal phase the first time you're like oh okay and once you get players to that point um i feel like doors open for them in the board game world because they now know that they can they can overcome those types of challenges and and see how games can be played and whatnot so i think it's a really great way to break in from you know midweight games into like heavyweight games with players uh who may be really reluctant uh to do so so yeah that's my number two see i think this is good to play the fourth or fifth time also me and kevin's first game with sebastian yes also nostalgia our very first game together brass birmingham because i Wanted to force people to play with me. So I met up with strangers and it happened to be these plus one Enrique. Shout out. <laughs> and we have been inseparable ever since. <laughs> yep. I can't believe I left that one home. I guess I remember that you had it. So Yeah. All right. Oh. Oh. Dwayne. What is number this two. game? Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. Yep. Number two. Number two. Wow. Very, very new game. Life of the Amazonia. Aminals. Man. <laughs> I think I only have like four or five plays of this game. That's totally And right. I bought it like last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I saw the cover and I was just like, oh, I gotta have it. Animal game. Oh man, look at these piece, these little animal meeples on the. You can't see it on You're the back. You're not an animal game person. Nah, nah. My top five, obviously. There's no animal games in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, saw the cover. One of those games where I just saw it, had to get it. It's first time I played this game. I was like, oh yeah, this is it. It hit. This is it. Um, if you've ever played Cascadia, it's literally Cascadia Plus. It's a bag builder at heart, but the way that uh, you put down animals, there's a whole lot of actions you can do on your score. turn. Tableau builder. Tab. Tableau builder. I wouldn't say it's a tableau builder. Building. Mm, nah. nah. Oh wow. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um. But yeah, the way the animals score, it just feels nice to be like you make a little. You know where everything's going to go, and when you're able to grab it and put it down, it's like, mm, that dude's going to bank me some points right there. Um, But yeah, fell in love with it. I've played it damn near every day since I bought it, <sighs> and it's quickly risen. It was five, then it was four, then it was three last night. Wow. With each play, it goes up. Then it was two this morning. <laughs> also very fresh in your brain. Also very fresh. So it probably does have that recency bias. But man, I love this game. If I could crack it open right now and play it right now, I would. It's just oh, so good. I love it. I love it so much. That right. is Life of the Amazonia. Dwayne's number two. All right. Kenzie. You guys want to try to guess my number two? What is it? No, Every one know. of you knows I don't want to guess. My number two. <laughs> this has such a special place in my heart. This is just one of those games that will forever be in my top. I don't know if it'll forever be two, but it will forever be in my top. Um, I forced people to play this game with me. That's how Kevin got me to do the podcast the other, the other night. This is just a zoo building game, which is like, you know, it's animals. It's gorgeous. Um, but it also, I really like the um, the action mechanism. Yeah, that yeah for the cards. How you have to prioritize things that you want to do, but you also don't need to do that top one. Um, you can do all of the other ones. It's, they're just not as strong. Um, you're making little little places for your animals, and then the marine worlds, right? It's called marine worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the marine worlds expansion just heightened this for me, um, and it just renewed my love for this game. And I played it like four or five times in a week. And this is a pretty long game. So the fact that I played it that many times, me, like other people, okay, I get it. But me, I played it four or five times in one week is pretty insane. What? I felt like that was a dig at Dwayne. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> this game specifically. <laughs> this, that game specifically. Like, it's just, it's a big one to get out. And then to also teach more people how to play it. It's a lot. But I love it. I got my Penguins Redemption the other day, so... Oh, I actually finally won using the penguin meeples. I just, I love it. And I'm excited to play it all together. And we've all played it already. So yeah, we'll be able to jump in and, and play. It's nice that a lot of these are like ones that we can just pull out and play. We don't and I feel like this one, learn. when you've played it enough times, it's just like, okay, next. Like, I know what I want to do. It's your turn. So hopefully it'll be like that. The only downfall with this game, which I guess if you had more players, it would be kind of hard to play it a lot, but. It's only four players. It oh, doesn't have five or fine. six. I think it, that's fine. Yes, but like I want to play with more people. For the downtime specifically. I want to play with more people. It would be cool to see just like six different people's zoos, yes. right? But the time is... I just want to play. I just want more people to love my game with me at the same <laughs> yeah. time. But this is my number two. My number two. Meh, 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 meh. The first crossover, it's Brass Birmingham. I knew Put it was right coming. Back coming back out. I knew so, it was coming. Brass Birmingham. What, what did you say? Can you just say it again? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ditto. Brass Birmingham, one of my favorite games. Um, probably the most strategic game of my top five. Um, but the, I don't want to sound pompous here, but the elegance in its design <laughs> really stands out. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's so satisfying. Yeah, it's real swirl the drink <laughs> i don't know it's one of those games that's so satisfying to play it's satisfying when things work out because 
you know, you get your, your cards, basically your options, right? And when the options are just flowing and people are not getting in your way and you're making sales and putting out the right links and getting all the points, it's perfect. Um, but that's my number two. I'm not even going to be, beat the horse anymore because uh, Kevin did a good job explaining it. That's my number two. I will say I have made him put this game away before without completing it. We'll talk about that later. No, you don't no, remember no, that? No, yes. that wasn't brass. Yes. Woo! No, that was Ooh! brass. Right. Wow. Number four. Number four for Stone Mayor. Uh, they Kevin's clearly number one. have something figured out. Um, <laughs> I'd be surprised to see if any other ones made it, though, because... Formulaic. Yeah. Um, so Scythe uh, just does everything it does incredibly well. Yeah. Um, for me, this was the first game that uh, I got that was glitzy, um, that had upgraded content and components. It's the first game the I ever... Resources. The, the resources. The uh, resources. Metal Coins. This is the game that made me fall in love with Metal Coins. And from like that point on, it was like, if, if that's an mm-hmm. option... You're doing it. I'm doing it. Like It's not even a question. I don't care. Uh, I don't care how much it costs. Like I'm getting the metal tokens. Um the, you Put know, it in my tab, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, double player mats. Um, the first time seeing that, you know, to be able to like set your stuff inside the mat and whatnot and having it oh, locked in yeah. place. This is the first game for me that ever did that. Um, and I, I think relative, I mean, honestly, a lot of that stuff was, I mean, it's only, the game's only a handful of years old, but I don't think there were a whole lot of games that were really um you know the dual layered boards i think that was our first dual layered board game yeah between that and other other upgraded components i don't think a lot of companies were doing that yet um so really kind of uh you know groundbreaking in that way um and then of course you know the way the game is played is phenomenal um i have uh, i've only played the the first expansion i've not actually been able to play wind gambits or what rise of fenrix um we did just get to play expeditions today which was fun um in the scythe universe um but um yeah again i think it was a very early kickstarter for me um and um definitely like hooked me into the idea of crowdfunding in a lot of ways so um yeah all right that was Kev's I... number one Hey, the is there another his, Stone Meyer game on this? The pinnacle of his list. There is not. No. Oh, I wow. Be... I am so surprised. Why? Mm-hmm. What? Libertalia. Oh, that one could have potentially. Oh. Yeah, that would have been a contender for oh, a right. Dwayne, I think we're a lower number. Dwayne's number one is. We got Taco, Taco Wait, Cat, are you serious right goat, now? Cheese Pizza. A uh, slapjack card game. He's not serious. That you... I forgot. I knew what You're this was. throwing things out very. Ca- Get okay. That shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Another third big in box. <laughs> this you is like some big. This and is chunky. Tidal blades right here again. This goes back to my early days of board gaming. This was just me and Matt. Those those days. I saw it. We went to Printed Meeple. Printed Meeple has a huge shelf of games that you can just bring on down. And play, they saw have this a huge library. Of yeah, games. they do. I saw this. I was like, "Damn, that game looks cool." Pulled it out. This game is table beautiful. presence king over here. Beautiful, probably honestly, in my opinion, one of the best looking games on the table um, that I've played at least. <laughs> um, <laughs> might have some words. The worker placement. Dice, uh, dice rolling. You're going out. And you're completing challenges on your turn. Um, fighting monsters if you want to. Funny thing is, like, you get points if you uh, beat up monsters. If you don't, you get a penalty because you suck and you're not protecting the island. So I think that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, uh, so much fun. Even even like the non deluxe version looks pretty good. But my favorite worker placement, at least, if uh, it's been before Clock Tower, this was my number one for years. Um, and the only reason it's number two is because of Clock Tower. So, but it's number one for all intents and purposes. Right? It is. It is. It is number one asterisk. We've actually <laughs> so right after the Kickstarter campaigns, it was always in the store. 
and we've looked at this so many times, but we just haven't picked it up. So you know I'm excited really, that we get the chance to play it. Yes. And you know, it's really one of my biggest, like, I don't want to get it. The size of the box. Yeah. It's an awkward shape. It's huge. It is an awkward shape. It will. It does not fit in a box I, or <laughs> in a bag, bag. I will say um, in a bag you can throw it in, but it's going to peek out of the corner a little bit. But in my opinion, it's very much worth it. I love this game to bits. <sighs> yeah, that's Title Blades. It's Title Blades. <laughs> <laughs> the baby. Good. Good game. All right, guys. Kenzie's number That's one. My number one. Honestly, the only one that I was like just waiting for it was Ark Nova. I was kind of surprised about the rest. Really? Yeah. That's, I feel like this is an yeah. Like, I should have known Obsession. We just, it's been a little bit since we played that. Not so cool. Those lights are refundable. <laughs> They're in the way. I'm just Try to make everything a little bit jolly. Just and grab the acrylic tile box. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Just grabbing that as a placeholder. I don't understand why this is a surprise. No, that's game. fine. I'm not surprised with that one. <laughs> so my number one is Castles of Burgundy. So this has been one of my absolute favorite games for a long time. Um, I just, I love. Even back when it was ugly. Yeah. 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 I didn't think it was ugly. It took convincing for her to play it when it was ugly. But once we played it, she was like, okay, this is worth it. Just the action mechanism for this one, too, is just, it's beautiful. I love it. We have the completely upgraded edition now. and She had a glow up. Will you please stop? You're so. going to make me cry. You want to make me cry in front of everybody? <laughs> she had a little bit of a glow up. And now, now we're all chasing her, you know? We're all trying to get a little bit of that burgundy. Mm. Go ahead. It's even better with the acrylic tiles. It is better with the acrylic tiles that we happen to miss out on. So, Awaken hey. Realms. <laughs> Ken's, I Awaken will. Awaken Realms, if you see this. I will bring the box of acrylic tiles. I'll bring tiles them so that I can tease you with so them and then them. Just so take them home them. when I'm and done with them. Well, know what you're missing. And then we'll go back to the cardboard. <laughs> the like yeah. 12 cardboard pieces that we have. I'm rethinking our friendship right now. But. Anyway, this is my number one. I love it. I'm. Excited for every for all of us to have to play it together. Okay. Okay, and we say the absolutely best for the absolute <laughs> last. No. Dominant species. Now. No. Bring them both. Bring them both down. Both. Bring them both. Both of them. Both of them. Why so, both of them? Because I love the series Dominant Species. Now I will say I brought both down. We're not going to play. I'm not going to make them play both. Dominant you're Species. Lucky you're when I play originally it played once. it. It took six hours. I got absolutely destroyed. I'm pretty sure and I, I loved every single second of that game. Um, I left that game night like I need to get this. And I don't and know we if did. you guys know GM GMT kind of does like P500. They do the P500 runs. So it's not something that's con their games are not constantly kept in stock. You know, you might find them at a store just waiting to be bought. But otherwise, they're not actively being printed all the time. So it took me a little bit to find it, I think. And then I think one day we saw it in the store. Games and stuff. Shout out to them in the new location. Looks cool. Um, but I have been trying to force Kenzie to play it at least once a year since we got it four years ago or something like that. We've managed to pull it out a little bit more than that. My favorite game ever. Until. Dominant Species Marine. Now, I will say caveat, which is why I have them both out here. I have only played Marine once. But in my opinion, something that I was nervous about, which actually we're, we're going to wait. We're going to talk about it later. Come back and watch that video. <laughs> my number one is Dominant Species as a whole. Marine may just overtake Species, and that's the one we're going to play. So, yeah, that was my number one. And that's... All of our top fives. That's crazy. And uh, we're going to be putting those videos out, those discussion videos, uh, each time that we play one of the games from our list. So stay tuned. Watch out for those. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing this. If you disagree with anyone's opinions, <laughs> please very loudly do that in the comments. Um, and wait for the videos because no, right now... comment this is... on the videos too. Okay, okay, okay. But so this is our top five currently. When we're done, our top five might change. Like, it could be totally different, you know? Title Blades could be 
My number three. You can move down. If you get wrecked so bad, you'll be like, Never know. I mean, I think it's also realistic that, like, the wind blows in a direction and your top five is going to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for Ark. I know Ark Nova will be up there. Castles will be up there. Those bottom three. I think, bottom was, three. I think it was easy for most of us to probably pick our top three. Maybe ordering them was a little bit difficult. My top three was easy. Yep. Four <laughs> started to get into that space where you're, you're starting to think about like, well, okay, like it's there, but it's it's not in the top three, but it's still comfortable. And I'm not really like having to make hard decisions yet. But five seemed impossible to choose. <laughs> it was hard. And like beyond that, because it was so easy to be like, well, if, if this is five, then you're like, well, what are my honorable mentions? What's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever? What's that list look like? And then you once you write that list down, you're like, well, you know, but for this reason, you know, this could be there. You know, hey, well, for this reason, this could be there. You know, Fox Experiment um, was in my is now in my top ten. And it's great, I ben. just didn't put it in there again because it's only got a couple plays. It's still relatively new. And I'm like, well, yeah, let's give this some more time to mature. Um, so, th- and I think everyone else had the same, you know, we didn't talk about what our numbers were. Like we didn't, nobody knew as you've seen that nobody knew what our, our picks were, but we talked about kind of the process. And, um, when well, the first time we were supposed to record this episode, like it's like oh, five o'clock in what? the afternoon. We were going to record on a different day. Yeah. Weird. Weird. Yeah. Somebody got sleepy. I don't know what happened there? Yeah. <laughs> Sebastian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but like, I mean, it was like a couple hours before we were supposed to record and people were still changing their minds about what they were going to put in their top five. So, I mean, yeah. And then never to be heard of Welcome. again. I will say, yeah. I will say, um, technically extra honorable mention. Encyclopedia was one of the ones fighting. I am so surprised. It was one of the ones fighting up there. It just. I almost put it in my top five. I didn't play. I haven't played enough, I feel, to really solidify it. I it was almost in line. If we continue down this train of thought, we'll just be here listing all. We of will your be board here games. listing everything. Every guard, every every game, and with not that, every game, and with that, I think that we can end the show. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Uh, and if you didn't, I am so sorry. And if you if, did, like and subscribe. And if you're asleep, thanks for <laughs> contributing to the total watch time. <laughs> But anyways, uh, we'll be back next week with some more stuff to talk about. Um, And hopefully you'll have one of our games out by then. Yeah, so keep an eye out for those videos. uh, Any little extra content that we do on the Instagram, Board and Scale. You can find all of us. I'm going to put our um, usernames in the description of this video. So go ahead and look for those if you're interested in following the channels. Um, But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. beep, beep. <laughs> there it goes. Kind of hit that hole a little bit. I thought that was your nickname in high school. <laughs>